Fourier at the American Banjo Museum. And we're doing our best to preserve, present, and promote the banjo in all of its styles. But we can't do it without you. We need your support. So I hope you'll join me in contributing to your American Banjo Museum. And thank you. Everybody. Welcome to the American Banjo Museum Virtual at Noon. My name is Johnny Beyer. I am the director here at the museum, kind of a guy who's got the dream job for a banjo player anywhere. Anytime you can love banjos and be surrounded by them every day of your working life, you are a lucky person. You're looking at a very lucky person. You know, here at the American Banjo Museum, this last year has been very weird for us. We were closed for three months, couldn't even welcome people in the door. But once we started welcoming our guests back to the museum, one of the aspects of the museum that we couldn't open just yet was our learning lounge. Several years ago, we had the idea, let's turn this space that we're sitting in right now into a place where people can come and pick the banjo, they can learn the banjo, they can learn about banjos, and they can get some lessons from some major banjo players around the world. We put it all together with the Deering Banjo Company and the Kirkpatrick Foundation right here in Oklahoma City and opened up what we call the Learning Lounge. Now the Learning Lounge has been closed since COVID took over, but we're happy to say that because things have turned around and things are really looking like a light at the end of the tunnel, our Learning Lounge is now open for you guys to come in. So if you're gonna visit the museum, bring your picking fingers with you because you're gonna get a chance to try out a bunch of these deer banjos. What Deering has done is given us banjos for all the different banjo styles that are represented here at the museum and then we put the squeeze on some of the world's best banjo players to teach you how to play these different styles of banjo. I was just playing a banjo ukulele. If you've never seen a banjo ukulele it's just kind of got a banjo body on it and a ukulele neck. If you can play the ukulele at all you can play the banjo ukulele but it's got some real special things that make it sound like a banjo and if you want to learn how to play the banjo ukulele or the classic banjo the five string bluegrass banjo any style of banjo you can come here look at the learning lounge screen and in this case I'm going to take you to a little banjo ukulele lesson with our board president Doug Parsons <laughs> I'm Doug Parsons and welcome to the American Banjo Museum in the Learning Lounge. Today I'm going to cover a little bit about the banjo ukulele. If you break it down, anybody can do this on a banjo. Not hard. And hit that string. Or just hit one string. And then do the strum. That's the basic frailing. But how do you put it together in a rhythmic fashion? There's also another man, a very famous man who played banjo. His name was Don Reno. And he came up with a style where he would play guitar, you know, similar guitar styles on the banjo, where he would use the index finger and the thumb, and he would use it like a pick that goes back and forth, and then he would play. This style is much more syncopated. It's much more rhythmically difficult. So where the modern style might sound in a steady rhythm, this has more of a syncopated rhythm sounding more like dotted rhythms or like a triplet that you'd hear uh, in Irish music. A roll, but you're playing bending the string in the tenth fret. So that's a little fun thing, it's kind of in an Earl Scruggs style. One, two, three, four. If you're having a little trouble, don't worry about it. 
just once it starts getting comfortable. Anyway, that's a, just a good way to get started playing some chords. So I hope you enjoy the banjo as much as I've been enjoying it for all these years. As we were putting the Learning Lounge together, one of the most fun parts of this project was taking some of the people that you might not think of as banjo players. People like John Lennon and Vince Gill. And then of course, people you do think of as banjo players. Guys like Roy Clark and Earl Scruggs and Steve Martin. All of these people learned from somebody when they were starting to play the banjo. And somewhere along the line, they either gave credit to their teachers or they gave credit to the inspiration that brought them to the banjo. When people come in the museum and they say, I could never learn to play the banjo, I say, yes, you can. If President Chester Arthur can learn to play the banjo, you can learn to play the banjo as well. So take some inspiration from some of these famous and infamous people who learned to play the banjo. If they did, so can you. When you visit the American Banjo Museum, you're gonna see a lot of banjos, you're gonna see a lot of memorabilia, but there are many things that aren't available during your general tour, namely the archives of the museum. We have amassed photographs, method books, recordings, video recordings, stuff that you just can't imagine that made up the history of the banjo. It's all part of our archives. Now, if you don't get into the archives in person, you can visit the archives virtually. Right here in the Learning Lounge, we've got a station set up where you can kind of press in and see what you'd like to see, and we can take you right to your area of interest, or if you are a member of the American Banjo Museum, on our website, in very short order, you're gonna be able to visit the archives from your living room or wherever you sit at your computer. So we're really working hard to be able to share all of the archival material that we can't put on exhibit, but we've got it for you to see here at the museum in the Learning Lounge or very soon right there at your own home. We also have a little library here. If you're a reader, we've got every book you can imagine ever written about the banjo here at the museum. So if you'd like, you can sit in one of our easy chairs and page through and learn something about the banjo you've never thought you'd know. Or if you'd like, you can't check things out, but you can visit us online and we will send you just about anything we can from any of these books. If you're doing a research paper, if you'd like some specific information, we've got it. If it's about the banjo, we'll share it with you. So remember, American Banjo Museum is my source for banjo information, online or in person, right here in the Learning Lounge. Another important part of the American Banjo Museum mission was the brainchild of one of our board members, Mr. Paul Poirier. Paul and his wife, Teresa, wanted to remember Teresa's father, Pete, who was a banjo player like many banjo players around the world. He wasn't a professional, he didn't make his living at it, but he loved the music, he loved the instrument, and he loved to play the banjo for other people. So what we wanted to do in memory of Pete was what we call the Banjo Players Directory. What we're trying to amass is a listing, a database, of every banjo player we can get our hands on. Any style of banjo, any type of music that you like to play, any make of banjo, wherever you played, however you played, you or anyone you know who played the banjo should be part of the American Banjo Museum Banjo Players Directory. You can visit us online at the banjoplayerdirectory.com or right at the AmericanBanjoMuseum.com website. You can sign up, get your name in there, and you will be part of posterity forever because people who visit the Learning Lounge can search for you, they can touch your name. If you provide us with photos or maybe a little biography about your playing career, so if you're a banjo player, I urge you, please, Join us, be part of the Banjo Players Directory at the American Banjo Museum. There's nothing that can match the look on the face of somebody who's just learned their first chord on a banjo. We've seen that look hundreds of times here at the American Banjo Museum. If you're not already a banjo player, come on in, pick up a banjo, watch some videos, you will walk out being a banjo player and it will change your life. Trust me, it changed my life and the lives of hundreds of other people who have learned their first chord, picked their first notes on a banjo right here in the Learning Lounge. We hope you've enjoyed this little visit of something that's new to many people because it's been closed for so long. 
We're so happy to be able to share the Learning Lounge with our museum visitors again. We want to thank the Deering Banjo Company and the Kirkpatrick Family Fund for helping us put this all together. We couldn't have done it without them, and we can't teach banjo without you. So make sure your visit to the American Banjo Museum includes a visit to the Learning Lounge. You'll get a chance to learn stuff like this.